Okay, we've made it to the town of Kur Kurok. I don't know. Up oh, in a fight, real quick. Ah, just a couple of goos. Flu goo and a mage goo. Well, the mage goos we've killed before. I don't know what the hell this flu goo is. Now we've got four characters. Okay. Ishren is up there. Can I change characters on the fly? Is that something I can do? Does when one character goes down, does Oh, oh look, you're all the way back here. Oh, okay. So I can swap out the characters on the fly. Okay. That's cool. Ryu doesn't even have to be in the party. Oh, you hit yourself. Great. Good move. Uh, okay, so every character got some experience points there. But I wonder if that was on account of me swapping the characters around, or if that's just how it how it goes. Oh, it's that oh that dude's like a bear or some shit. It's not the same guy we saw before. Dog. I guess. <laughs> um. Okay, so this is a master. You would... Okay, in Breath of Fire 3 anyway... You had the master system where you would apprentice one of your characters to a master and that master would would um, alter your levels, your, your stats as you leveled up. And then also as you leveled up would give you um, special spells and stuff and abilities. So this Rolf fella is a mage. So AP would go up, a power would go down by one, and intelligence would go up by one. Okay, so if I put Ryu, Kray, or Urshin, or Urshin in here, the problem with apprenticing one of them is that you would reduce their power, and the three of those characters seem to be quite dependent on their ability to use physical attacks. No, but this would strengthen their magic abilities, but, um, like, especially with a pure bruiser class like this one here, I don't know if that's really worth it. Now you have Nina here, who is a mage. That would increase her magic, but, uh, but it would further weaken her in terms of attack power. Fortunately, this character, this, uh, master doesn't reduce her defense, which would be a problem. This is a trade-off I'm willing to take going to be very dependent on her AP and her intelligence, and as the story goes on, I'm pretty sure she's going to get left behind in terms of power anyway. So this will really weaken her in terms of physicality, physical attacks, but strengthen her in terms of magic. I'll make this trade. Combo attack. The hell's a combo attack? Deep diver, let's say fishing lure. How do I fish in this game? I haven't run into that yet. Now, as I level up, my uh, 
as I measure a level up, I'll be able to return to this master and use that, um, talk to him and gain special abilities as level ups happen. Oh, look, the characters in the back row. Also, uh, they, like, increase their, I don't know, recover their HP or something. And Urshan didn't take part in that battle, but gained experience anyway, so that's good. Now, it seems it's not so much leveling up as it is performing certain tasks. So, I guess this wasn't the town that I was trying to get to. It just was just some obstacle in the way. Damn. Well, damn. Okay, so I guess dragons are common enough of things in this version of the Breath of Fire world that this guy is just pretty nonchalantly talking about a dragon. Like, ah, yeah, he just swims around in the mud usually. But now, I don't know, he's being an asshole. Okay, so we've got, uh... oh, she hasn't, she hasn't gained the skill yet. Ah. Uh. Okay, so. Nina hasn't gained that skill yet. Oh, okay. Oh, it's gonna direct the others to attack. You know what? I wish I didn't kill that. I'm gonna get into another fight with one of these things, and I'm gonna try and learn that ability, because that was something that you could do in Breath of Fire 3. You could... You can learn enemy skills by observing them in battle and then you use them later. And uh, what was it called? It was called Influence in 3. I didn't see what it was called here. It was pretty useful. At least the first time I played through the game. The subsequent times... The game's not that difficult, so I didn't really need to screw around with enemy skills that much. I'm gonna try and gain that ability though. Come on, give me another one of them one of them things. Oh, okay, not quite where I expected to go. Sluice control panel. One of them horse guys. Oh, no, he's an armadillo guy, not a horse guy. It's cool to see that they put character portraits even for the unimportant characters. 
And it seems like they're, they have a few different ones, so we're not seeing the same portrait over and over again, at least not yet. Gonna go for a swim, bro. Yeah, that, that logic tracks. All right, so we gotta find a key. Gotta find a key. Couldn't they just build a proper bridge? Tells this guy's searching for. He's he's panning. All right, so this I gotta find the dude to give me the key for this gate in here. Is this the fight that I want? Nope. Though, let's, uh... Let's guard through this, just in case. Because we got new enemies here. I just wanted to see if maybe one of these would have something that I could use. Okay, that one didn't. Dude, you're gonna kill all of them? Man, these things hit hard. Am I not, like, armored enough, maybe? Okay, I didn't get what I wanted. I don't know, it is kind of an old-school RPG thing where the, the numbers were low enough that you weren't able to simply... Um, absorb a whole lot of hits. So, like, that hit she took, that Nina took, took off, like, a third of her HP. And the third game and the second game were like that as well. I think it was more of a modern convention in RPGs where the... where the, um... characters had so much health that they could take a lot more hits. Tended to drag battles out, even though battles were already pretty long to begin with. All right, so I gotta get to the other side of this. Why can't I just jump over this shit like I jump over everything else? But whatever. Don't be too hard on it. It's a fucking video game. <laughs> Alright, I need to find a dude with the key. Was it you? Alright, I was gonna skip over this fight, but I decided to bring it uh, back on. Because Nina leveled up, and you can see the effects of the master that she's using. Notice she gained no power with that level up. I don't know whether she would have or not, but she definitely didn't in this level up. But Wisdom went up by five points. Now you can see the color is blue for the number. And, uh... The uh, and AP went up by three points. So it was probably only two before, now it's three, and Wisdom was only four before, now it's five. But she didn't gain any power. Now, Ryu, on the other hand, also leveled up, and he got two, two, three, and one. Uh, 31 HP and 3 AP, so overall he had a better level. More stats went up, but since he wasn't apprenticed to anybody, there was no modifier for his level. Oh, I thought I could walk out on that. <laughs> oh, whoop, not what I went, wanted to do. Where's this bastard with the key? Uh, 
Oh, okay, so this loser is the one that had the key. Yeah, I uh, was running around like an idiot. Didn't realize that I already talked to him. So, oh, so I got to go back inside, and then I got to uh, activate the sluice gate. Then I got to give it to that guy, and then he'll activate the elevator. back first and give the guy the key. Now it's been a while since we played put any time in as that Faulu guy. What's up with that? Is he gonna be a major player in this game or not? Okay, already, I thought I was done. Do I have to walk across the damn sluice gate? That's D-A-M-N, not D-A-M sluice gate. Just thought I needed to clarify. Is it over here I have to go? That's a no. All right, that was a battle against those weird duck platypus things. And I gained the command ability. Uh, how do I? There we go, command. Works on a conf uh, against enemy, also works on confused allies. So if one of my allies gets the confused stat, I can utilize that so they continue to attack who I want them to. That's an extra little bit of utility, huh? Oh, oh okay. I actually do walk across the gate. Am I on the other side now? <laughs> Oh, here we are. Short sword! Oh, damn. Okay, finally. Finally. Ah, lowers agility. It is heavy. Well, the Bowie knife was a light weapon, so... And finally, something with better stats than the royal sword. Even though it's a little bit heavier, it does have higher power. That is a trade-off I will make. So, stats. Okay, Ryu is still lower in attack power than Kray, and Kray is also a level below him, so Kray is definitely going to be the powerhouse. A uh, little bit higher than Urshan. A uh, fair bit higher than Nina. His defense is a little bit higher also, but just the agility and the magic is still putting her way up there. That uh, power disparity, though, is of course going to get quite a is only going to grow. The character stats, I guess, will will uh, continue to do, grow apart as the game continues. Higher levels, you know. The one thing I'm still worried about, though, and it's one of the, the thing that existed in Breath of Fire 3 also, which I was always a little bit cautious about uh, going and, and uh, setting up my characters with masters were, is because I am afraid of gimping the characters in such a way that it makes the game 
hard, makes it harder to use them in some fashion. So okay, okay, in this game, let's take Nina because I put her with that, with that master already. She's going to broken. All right, so have a mini game. Uh, what? <laughs> Wasn't working. No, damn it. <laughs> All right, so I gotta spin the wheel. So you go around control stick and you wait for the wheel to get high pitched. There we go. Okay, mini games are plenty. Alright, so what I was saying before was that you had uh oh, treasure chest. You would have the character like Nina, who is clearly intended to be a sta uh, casting class, even though she's actually been able to do some some reasonable damage up until this point. Some pretty good damage. Physically anyway. Now if I go and I set her up like I did with a master that lowers her power by one, she may have only gained one point of power in any given level. So if I reduce that to zero, then she's just never going to get any stronger. It's only if she manages like two or three points per level up, which probably won't happen that often, that she'll gain anything. So she so far has been actually pretty useful for dealing physical damage, but it won't be all that long before... She just can't uh, keep up anymore in terms of physical attacks. I'm going to have to stop using her to do physical attacks. Then again, her magic attacks will be that much stronger by that point, and she'll have maybe have some other abilities that she can use. And that'll make, uh, that'll make up the difference there. But it will make the character harder to use. Because AP, unlike physical attacks, AP does get used up. So I can totally envision a situation where Nina runs out of AP in the middle of a fight and I don't have the items or the ability to restore it like I need to, so she essentially becomes useless in the fight. It's possible, and that's the, that's the thing you always have to worry about with casting characters. Casting characters can be massively powerful, massively useful, but they can also be a bit of a risk. Fortunately, it doesn't lower her defense, because if it did, I doubt I would have uh, chosen it as a as a master for Nina, because I definitely don't want to have a flimsy character. Swallow Eye. That is an item, at least if 
the logic tracks in the previous game that increases the character's agility permanently by one point. It's actually pretty useful. I'm not going to use it yet, though, because I wonder if there's going to be some sort of like an item duplication ability later on in this game, where I can just duplicate that and max out my character's stats easy. Look at what we have here. You have this kind of uh, lighting effect as they travel through shadowed areas. A shadow passes over the sprites. Uh, we're, we're 26 minutes in, so I'm going to bring this episode to an end. I'm sort of deciding on the fly where to end episodes, but since I don't know the plot of this game or what's going on or what's coming up ahead, I kind of have to take guesses. So I'm going to try and keep the episodes from 10 to 20 minutes long. This one went well beyond because I thought maybe I was going to stumble upon a boss fight any second now. I have a feeling it's coming up real soon, <laughs> but at 26 minutes long, it, the episode's already on the long side, so I'm going to end it here, though. Thanks for watching.